What if a rocket cheaper and more efficient than Falcon 9 and even New Glenn is about to enter the market? That moment may be closer than you think. Rocket Lab is closing in on Neutron, also known as the Hungry Hippo, a powerful medium-lift rocket with a highly unconventional design. Once it enters service, Neutron could shake up the satellite launch market, challenging not just SpaceX and Blue Origin, but the entire industry. So, when will Neutron fly for the first time? What does it actually do better than Falcon 9? And why is Falcon 9 still widely seen as being in a league of its own? Let's break it all down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Rocket Lab has long been a major player in the small satellite launch market. Since its debut in 2017, the Electron rocket has racked up an impressive track record with more than 70 successful launches. Designed specifically for small payloads, Electron quickly captured a large share of the small sat market thanks to its high reliability, relatively low cost, and an industry-leading launch cadence, with around 20 launches planned this year alone. But as life moves fast, so does the space industry. In recent years, we've seen an explosion of larger, more advanced satellite constellations. These satellites are bigger, heavier, and far more complex demanding rockets with greater lift capability to deploy them quickly and cost-effectively. To adapt and scale up, Rocket Lab officially announced the development of Neutron in March 2021. Neutron is a partially reusable medium-lift rocket, capable of delivering up to 13,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. It's purpose-built for large constellation deployments and heavier payloads. And the goal is clear. Neutron is designed to compete directly with established workhorses like SpaceX's Falcon 9, which has dominated the market since the 2000s, while also taking on emerging heavy hitters like Blue Origin's New Glenn. That strategy is now starting to turn into real hardware. The company recently shared an update on X, saying, Hungry Epo is on the move. With qualification and acceptance testing complete, Neutron's fixed reusable fairing and upper module is on its way to LC3. And that's a big deal. According to details released after the tests, opening and closing the two halves of Neutron's fairing under flight-like conditions takes just 1.5 seconds, less than half the time typically required for stage separation and vehicle reorientation during recovery operations. The 275,000-pound load was distributed across the fairing's carbon composite structure to simulate the forces experienced during Max-Q, the phase of flight, when Neutron is subjected to maximum aerodynamic pressure. Rocket Lab also conducted 125% mechanical load testing on the aft control surfaces, which helped guide the first stage during ascent and stabilize it again during atmospheric re-entry. With testing complete, the fairing is now being shipped to Launch Complex 3 at Wallops Island, Virginia, where it will be integrated ahead of Neutron's first launch campaign. And just yesterday, the Neutron team lifted the second stage static fire test stand into place at LC3. This sets the stage for the first static fire test of Neutron's second stage, which will test its single Archimedes engine. If that test campaign goes smoothly, Neutron's first flight could happen as early as the first quarter of 2026. If not, a more realistic window would be around mid-2026. But chances are, things will go just fine. About four months ago, Rocket Lab conducted a separate Archimedes engine test, and the results were impressive, especially the clean blue flame. Speaking of Archimedes, it runs on the same propellant combination as SpaceX's Raptor engines, liquid methane and liquid oxygen, using a stage combustion cycle. Performance-wise, the numbers are strong, the sea level version produces up to 730 kilonewtons of thrust, or about 164,000 pounds, force with a specific impulse of 329 seconds. The vacuum optimized version pushes that to 890 kilonewtons, or 200,000 pounds force, with an ISP of 367 seconds. So, how does all of this compare to SpaceX's Merlin 1D, the engine that powers Falcon 9? Merlin 1D uses a gas generator cycle. In its sea level configuration, it produces about 845 kilonewtons of thrust, or 190,000 pounds force, with a specific impulse of 282 seconds. The vacuum version pushes that to 981 kilonewtons, or roughly 220,500 pounds force, with an ISP of 348 seconds. 
Multiply that by nine engines, and Falcon 9's first stage delivers a total thrust of around 7,607 kilonewtons. This is where the trade-offs become clear. Archimedes clearly outperforms Merlin 1D in specific impulse, thanks to its methane fuel and more modern stage combustion design. But Merlin 1D wins on raw thrust per engine and offers a much wider throttle range, roughly 40 to 100 percent. More importantly, Merlin 1D is a proven engine, with its reliability demonstrated across hundreds of flights. Archimedes, by contrast, still needs time and flight experience to build that same level of confidence. One more interesting point. Both boosters use nine engines. Even so, Falcon 9's booster produces about 160 tons more thrust than neutrons. And that makes sense. Falcon 9 stands nearly 70 meters tall when fully stacked, while Neutron is much shorter, at around 43.5 meters. Falcon 9 simply needs more power to lift a taller, heavier vehicle, and to carry more payload. That difference in thrust directly translates into payload capability. Falcon 9 can lift up to about 22.8 metric tons to low Earth orbit, while Neutron tops out at around 15 metric tons. In pure lift capacity, Falcon 9 clearly comes out ahead. However, Neutron does hold two key advantages over Falcon 9. The first is launch price. Rocket Lab is targeting a price of around 55 million US dollars for a dedicated Neutron launch. That works out to roughly $4,230 per kilogram for a 13-ton payload to Elio. Falcon 9, by comparison, typically flies at around $67 million per launch, which is noticeably more expensive per mission. But this is where things get a bit tricky. Falcon 9 can carry more than 10 additional tons compared to Neutron, which brings its effective cost down to roughly $2,600 to $2,940 per kilogram. So, no, Neutron doesn't actually beat Falcon 9 on a pure cost per kilogram basis. But that's not really the point. Neutron becomes very attractive for customers who don't need Falcon 9's full lift capacity. For those missions, paying for unused payload margin makes little sense. In that context, Neutron still has a real chance to capture a portion of Falcon 9's market in the years ahead, especially for dedicated launches where right-sizing the rocket matters more than raw performance. So, what's the second advantage? Design. Neutron uses Rocket Lab's so-called Hungry Hippo fairing, named after the way it opens in space, like a hippo opening its mouth. The rocket itself is short and stocky, which is also where the nickname comes from. Unlike Falcon 9, Neutron's fairing is permanently attached to the booster. It never separates during flight. When it's time to deploy the satellites, the fairing simply opens, releases the payload into orbit, then closes again and returns to Earth with the booster. This design allows the fairing to be reused immediately without the need for a separate recovery operation. As a result, Neutron can potentially achieve a much faster turnaround time than Falcon 9. Falcon 9, by contrast, jettisons its fairing about three minutes after liftoff. The two halves then fall into the ocean, and SpaceX has to send out specialized recovery ships to retrieve them. SpaceX has done this hundreds of times, so it's clearly not a major problem, but compared to Neutron's approach, it's undeniably less convenient. In short, both are partially reusable rockets. Both are designed to land on a drone ship. Falcon 9's system works and is extremely well proven, while Neutron's design is simpler, cleaner, and potentially more efficient when it comes to rapid reuse. But there's one thing Neutron will never be able to do, and Falcon 9 already does routinely. Thanks to its unmatched versatility, Falcon 9 hasn't just launched hundreds of satellites, it has also successfully flown human-rated spacecraft like Crew Dragon to the International Space Station. To date, Falcon 9 has logged over 588 successful launches, including both cargo and crewed missions. And that lead isn't slowing down. As early as 2026, Falcon 9 is set to further cement its role by launching Vast Space's Haven 1 module, the world's first commercial space station, into low Earth orbit. Ironically, Neutron's clever, hungry hippo design is also its biggest limitation. That fixed fairing architecture means Neutron is essentially locked into satellite launches, and that's likely where it will stay for the foreseeable future. So, in the bigger picture, Neutron's debut doesn't really threaten Falcon 9 in any fundamental way. Falcon 9 operates on a completely different level, serving missions that Neutron simply wasn't designed to handle. Because of that, SpaceX doesn't really see Rocket Lab 
as a serious threat. If the competition between SpaceX and Blue Origin is a 10 out of 10, then Rocket Lab versus SpaceX is probably closer to a 3. That said, there have been a few tense moments in the past. Back in 2020, after Rocket Lab lost seven customer satellites due to an electron failure, Elon Musk publicly supported Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck, saying, Sorry to hear about this. Hope you get back to orbit soon. Rockets are hard. It was a respectful gesture that helped ease tensions at the time. Things changed in 2023 when Beck openly criticized SpaceX for what he called an accidental monopoly. He argued that Falcon 9's ultra-low-cost rideshare missions were distorting the small launch market, making it increasingly difficult for companies like Rocket Lab to compete and raising concerns about potential anti-competitive behavior. More recently, in 2025, following a series of Starship explosions, Beck appeared to take a subtle jab at SpaceX, commenting, We're not going to rush and take stupid risks to launch Neutron before it's ready. That remark quickly reignited online debates about whether a real rivalry exists between the two companies. Hopefully, Neutron's first flight won't face further delays, and more importantly, it won't end in an explosion. Because if it does, that comment would look less like confidence and more like shooting yourself in the foot. By contrast, Elon Musk applies a fail-fast, learn-fast philosophy to the Starship program. SpaceX is willing to accept risk during test flights to gather real-world data, rather than waiting for every upgrade to be perfected before the next launch. This approach is built around rapid iteration. Each flight tests specific systems, exposes weaknesses, and feeds improvements directly into the next version. It's largely the opposite of the traditional NASA-style approach, which is slower and more expensive due to its demand for near perfection from the start. Musk has repeatedly emphasized that rapid evolution is the key to success. Failing early in real flight conditions reveals problems faster than simulations, allowing SpaceX to move quickly from one version to the next, including Starship V3 and V4, which deliver major performance gains, 